Well, hello everyone. I am Marion, the Inappropriate Artist, and this amazing bronze sculpture is in the center of this rotary out in front of the public library in Artesia, New Mexico. There are many of these amazing bronze sculptures throughout town. This one in particular just really blew my mind and was full of books that awakened my imagination as I was growing up. Earlier this day we had searched for and found many Pico diamonds, which is what this area is known for also. And this, look at this amazing, I'm about to walk up on this and it just blew my mind. Look at the ripples in the binding of the book as well as in the pages. Just beautiful. Mm. What makes this place so freaking magical right there is white sand. Look at the mountains. I mean, I d I'm remembering this painting I did of Holloman Lake, and I'll have to insert an image of it here to show you. But you can see where I came up with the palette for this painting. Look at that. And then there's the theme. She's like, the window's down? No, I got her, don't worry. Good morning. <clears throat> I know I didn't film last night. I was so tired when I got in. Ooh. I was so tired when I got in that I decided it was just eat and go to bed. <laughs> I am on Holloman Lake. Back here a year just about later. I think I... When I parked here, I think it was December, and now I'm in Jan I'm in January. Oh my god, January, 2023. What? I know. I wrote the date yesterday, or the day before yesterday when I was getting gas. And it was like sorry, I had to put the camera down. Um. Yeah, I just was. <sighs> um. It's. And I'm going to have to get used to writing 2023. Ah, I finally got used to painting twos. Hey, little bean. I know. Look at you. Who's the prettiest girl in the whole white world? It's Nugget. You can see she's terribly excited about that. No. Um. She's smizing at me. Cats, the original smizers. Yes, yes. I know not everybody can, right? But if you are someone who is traveling, and especially if you're traveling in a vehicle, if you're living in a vehicle, if you're car camping, say, okay, I mean, I have big stuff by comparison as to what palettes are available out there. Um, but I have... And, and, like, this is big. But that's because I have a bigger space to store in. So you don't have to have such a big kit. A friend gave me these books. These are inexpensive. These are you can get them at Walmart by like a pack of twelve or something. Um, I just simply sketch sometimes locations, and I leave a lot of dead space because I'm writing a story about my travels, and so I'll go back in and write my memories and feelings down about these spots. Sometimes I do it while I'm painting. Sometimes I do it after the fact, right? Um, but it's something to do. Oh, I man my manifestation. I'm gonna $5,000 from YouTube for a creator fund. 
I'm going to be awarded that. Someone's going to enter me. Um, and like, you know, here are the Oregon Mountains. So I'll, at some point, I've took lots of study photographs so that I can go back in and kind of color it in, right? It's, it's basically all you're doing. It's coloring it in. All right, so this is like, instead of a photo scrapbook, instead of a digital scrapbook, like, I mean, you have one. You're going to have a digital scrapbook, but that can become... Well, all right, let me, let me say, if you are someone like me, so this may not be for everybody, right? Your digital scrapbook could be enough for you. I'm a very tangible person. So once things are digitized, um, they kind of don't exist to me anymore. You know, I, I don't identify with them anymore. Uh, but... This holds energy because I've put it into it, right? This is one of my bags from Fine Art America with one of my paintings. This is the Androscoggin River in the Mist in fall. Painted that while I was there. And this was a, a plain air painting. Uh, that I did finish using a photograph, but I was still, like, um, just getting used to painting on the road and in a spontaneous fashion. Um, so in this bag of tricks, I have a tube of permanent white and a tube of zinc white. Okay. I like both. Permanent white is going to, you, you know, can be accent white when I'm finished. This is gouache, so that's how I use the gouache. So my permanent white is accent white when I'm finished. My zinc white sometimes is accent white, but most often because it's more transparent, uh, I use it for blending to make, uh, to desaturate colors, to create more of a palette. Uh, when I want something to be atmospheric, this is often going to be my best friend. Um, why do I always carry these as tubes? Because I always want my white to be white. Do you know what I'm saying? It keeps it clean. I always put fresh white out. Uh, yeah, unless what I'm doing. Or I have, so here's another way of achieving that faster. If you don't want to carry the tube, um, so you can get little mini brushes too, by the way. So this is what I like to use, and I just have my favorites that I use for sketching in this bag. So I, I can just grab this bag. All right. I'm getting it. I, it's taken me a while to get to the point where I knew what I wanted to put together to do this. So now that I understand what I like to travel paint with, I can finally share this information with you. All right. That's my grab palette knife. Right? Um, and then this is what I wanted to show you that was in here. So I have a couple different travel palettes. Sometimes I will just grab this. All the pigment is dried in here, right? Uh, I can use a spray bottle to reconstitute it. Um, and then, you know, my whites will be what they are if I use this, which is usually much more atmospheric. Oh, got some really cool cloud reflections in the water right now. Wow. Pretty colors. And it's raining. That's why it's like a little bit wild that... Girl. Isn't that a beautiful... What a difference. Woo. I got distracted. 
All right. Oh, gorgeous. What pretty color. <laughs> wow. I really did capture it in that painting. Um, remembering. So, everybody has their own personal palette. I like working with a limited palette. And what you see in here is a pearling black, an ivory black. Uh, I have an anthraquinone. Maybe I said that right. Blue. It's a watercolor. However, the rest of this is gouache. The reason is because this color is freaking awesome and so versatile. Um, I truly love it. And when blended with gouache, becomes gouache. So, uh, I guess you could say I always work in mixed media then, right? But gouache is an opaque watercolor. Uh, I know they have their very big differences, but I've got, so this is where usually my, um, my pinky red that I can't remember the name of <laughs> goes here. My orangey red goes here. This is a turquoise. This is a cerulean blue. This is usually cadmium yellow light or a lemon. Uh, and this is usually just cadmium yellow. This is ultramarine blue, burnt umber, uh, opera rose. And then these are all blended. And then this is usually where I put the white. And this is the pearling black. I pointed that out. Uh, this is a mix of greens. Um, yeah, so you can see it's very limited. I don't use a whole lot. And the Opera Rose is, is very rare. But uh, when the sun, what the Opera Rose does is it helps make more of a, if I mix it with the lemon, it be, it's great for clouds. So, because it has, it, it becomes like a peachy orange. It's so pretty. It's really pretty. So, yeah, it becomes like a really pretty peachy soft orange. So, that's why I like the Opera Rose. I'm, I'm using it to mix very specific things. And also, it makes a great um, purple that I like when mixed with the ultramarine blue. Um, so, and, but the opera rose is not as light fast. So I'm actually sort of phasing it out and in search of a more light fast, basically hot pink is what I want. <laughs> um, I want fuchsia, baby, because I like to make fuchsia. Fuchsia exists in nature. <sighs> One of my fa my dad's favorite hanging plants was fuchsia. It was I think called? Is it called a fuchsia? There's, there's snow on them, there are mountains in the distance. Dang. Am I going to see snow on the Oregon Mountains? That's kind of exciting. So, anyway, this is travel palette number one, right? Like, so, 
And often what I like to do is like have all of this cleaned off. Sometimes I'll just bring it to use as the palette and I won't use the color pigment that's in it. I'm about to show you my number one favorite travel palette. So, oh, trick. How to not crush your brushes when you're keeping them in something like this. I make sure that always my handles are facing all in the same direction. And that when I zip it, I know that this is the top. So this is how they go in the bag. And it just, it's a simple way. Um, yes, you can buy lots of fancy stuff, but I'm basically telling you, you can go to Staples and buy a pencil bag or, a, you know, for, uh, do they even sell Trapper Keepers anymore? <laughs> I don't know if they do or not, but a trapper keeper. Were they were the best notebooks ever. Seriously. You could keep a bunch of subjects in one notebook. It was great. Did I have like a... Or is it just a shadow? I can't tell. It looks like I have a big smudge on my face, but I don't think... I, I think it's just the light. Okay. Well, I have a tendency of doing that to myself all the time. And I did play guitar the other day. And it was after I took my shower or so, or yesterday. Brain fart. <sighs> Smoke on the water, fire in the sky. Wow. Ah. Uh. Oh, that's right. So I had done another painting of the Oregon Mountains that I gave in a trade. I love when my paintings can be currency. For working on my guitar. Um, and it was of here. I took, well, I had driven up the road a little bit, but it's these mountains right in front of me. And the, I'm going to try to find a, I'm going to find the image. I'm going to put the painting image right here. So you can see the light just was like, whew, right? It's really beautiful. And I'm looking at these now. And this is kind of cool. Like, this is what I'm talking about. I love the fact that when I come back to these places after I've painted them, One, I can see how much more I want to do, but two, I feel it, it just, it feels like coming home when I come to a place that I've parked before and painted. Just as wonderful things. So this, and you can fit a lot of stuff in here. You can band together your brushes. You know, you can put them in their own little separate case if you want to and put them in here to protect the tips. So However you want to organize yourself, but this is how I keep it small. Um, and it can be smaller. This. All right. So my favorite travel palette. I'll eventually get there. We're keeping it small. Is this. Oh, I took it apart. Wait. All right. So this lovely little. And you can use watercolor in here. You can use a gouache in here, which is what I have in here. And I think you can use it for acrylic, too. Um, and I would suspect you could also use this for oils. Um, and it's a way of traveling without having to travel with a lot of tubes of paint and worrying about dropping a whole bunch of little things. 
So that's my, you know, I'm, I leave shit behind all the time as you found out. I mean, I left important stuff behind because I didn't sit and take a physical inventory of everything. I have to. I can't rely on, um, yeah, anyway. So, oh, this, I'm supposed to be showing you what I'm doing. And why I think this is such an amazing little thing. All right, so. Here's my lovely little travel palette, right? So you click this up and you can separate these two, right? Now you take, make that down and you can take this and pop and it opens sesame. Now you have, uh, well, it's a bit of a mess because it seems I did not completely close that. And it was turned sideways, so I'm going to have to probably do some cleaning up in here. Um, yeah, I am i don't want to peel this up and make a mess at the moment. I'm not prepared to clean this right now. You know how hard this is for me? Okay, so... Usually this is clean. <laughs> The top of this is clean. I am so scared to open this right now. I really hope I don't have to redo stuff in here. Oh, I think I might be okay. All right. So this is silicone and it peels up. Ooh. Right? And your pigment as you can see, I mean, because it didn't, I didn't, per, I didn't properly seal the edge. So I ended up with a little red leakage and I can see why, because I didn't clean my edge here and I had a lump, so it seeped out. But if I have the top of this clean, it'll seal up nice. This won't happen. Um, but yeah, I have ready to work with paint and pigment. If you mix a little uh, blending medium or uh, any other kind of a, um, a slow uh, drying medium in with your pigment when you put it in here, um, depending on what you're working with, right? Because, I mean, acrylic is different. I am going to need a paper towel to put this back down. But I, I love the size of this, okay? If you're working with watercolor, just mist your top and boom, right? With the gouache, I do the same thing. I mist the top and I stir it up with my palette knife and I've got creamy gouache to work with on the go, which is fabulous. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can only imagine that with acrylic... I don't know. I haven't used it with acrylic, but I can imagine you can use it with acrylic and oil. Uh, those of you who work with those medium, you would know, or media, you would know uh, how that works. I don't. Uh, anyway, this stands so that when it's sitting on something, your palette stays, your mixing palette stays stable. I like the size of this palette because it forces me to clean it off and move on to the next thing. Um, yeah. So this is nice and small. So you can really just about set up anywhere and paint. Oh, and I forgot to... Kind of forgot one of the best parts. It pops out into your water container and you can just fill it and go so that's my portable travel palette I love being able to paint and express my memories this way um, and you know like I said you don't have to make finished beautiful paintings for it to make um, you know if you're nervous about sleeping where you are right if you are afraid, pull out a sketchbook. 
focus on the beauty that is in front of you. If you are afraid and you are in a place where you know you don't need to be afraid, but you're struggling to shake the fear, pull out a sketchbook. You can journal and draw at the same time. Throw some pigment down. Make a piece of paper dirty. Get all the ugly things out of the head so that you can say, so that you can sleep feeling more peaceful. And it is a practice. But I can promise that when we distract our brain like this, rather than using substances, this grows us. So the next time we won't feel it as severely. Whereas if we're just numbing it with substances, we're, we're not healing it. So anyway, that's my thoughts. I love you. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed my um, crazy ramble through to try to show you how you can make painting a portable existence and a different way of keeping track of your memories of your travels. If you're living in a vehicle like I am, if you're a nomad, if you're trying to figure out what to do on that rainy day when you're confined in the vehicle because whatever. It's a way to, you know, shut off the technology for a while and just enjoy where you are in the moment. I often like to listen to a book while I'm painting. Or sometimes music, but mostly books when I'm in the van. If I was in a studio, I like music because I'm standing and I can dance while I paint. All right, that's enough. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.